What's up guys? Here I have the Beta FPV Beta 85 Pro 2 2S Whoop. I've had this guy for quite a few months now. I've been flying it quite a bit and I just wanted to share with you guys my experience with this guy as well as some of the other 85 millimeter Whoops that I have and fly as well as taking a look at the newer C01 Pro camera by Beta FPV. The Beta 85 Pro 2 comes with an F4 2S AIO 5 amp flight controller, 1103 11,000 kV brushless Beta FPV motors, the A01 camera, and a 25 to 200 milliwatt VTX. Let's go ahead and get a weight on this. This is totally stock. And it looks like we're coming in at about 41.4 grams. One of the things I love so much about this size or class of Whoop, even though it is a little bit bigger than some of the other ones that people fly, I just find that this specific recipe or mix of pieces and parts at this propeller size as well as weight just seems to fly better than anything else um, whoop wise that I've come across as far as something that's strictly two cell really lightweight can truly fly it anywhere and not really have to worry about injuring anyone since we're only at about 40 grams dry uh, the other thing that I like is this recipe here ends up being very quiet with these four blade Avon propellers here that comes on this guy's stock so you don't really end up bothering people, which is also a pretty nice feature, I would say. Um, one of the main things I did want to try with this, since I've been flying it for quite a while, it does fly very well and very comparable to the custom ones I've been making for quite a while, is I wanted to see how this stock A01 camera from Beta FPV that comes on here compares to their new C01 Pro camera. Um, so I have swapped this back and forth between these two cameras a few times just to get a feel and be able to compare between the two cameras. And one thing that I've noticed for sure is that the clarity in the C01 Pro is better. The colors seem to be a little bit better, but for me, the biggest downside of this C01 Pro is that the field of view is smaller. I would guess that the stock camera is somewhere around 130, 140 degrees field of view, which would put this guy closer to 120, 130, the C01 Pro. It's not a huge difference, but it is enough of a difference to notice. And in my opinion, the smaller field of view tends to kind of take me out of it and not, I don't really feel as immersed when flying and you obviously can't see as much. Um, it doesn't feel like you're going as fast. The footage doesn't look as exciting. Um, and this stock camera here from Beta FPV already has a somewhat narrow field of view as far as whoops are concerned. One of my favorite cameras is the Wolf Whoop WT05 camera. And if this guy's running 120 to 130 field of view and this guy is running closer to 120, that Wolf Whoop camera must be closer to you know something GoPro Super View level as far as maybe 150 or 160 degrees field of view, which really immerses you in the flight and also makes the footage look quite a bit more exciting because it makes it look like you're going a lot faster. You can see more, um, and I've just I've just gotten a lot more used to that wider field of view. So coming from a camera that's already slightly small in the field of view range down to the Caesar one pro sure it does look better and have more clarity but you're losing that field of view so you have to make the decision for yourself whether or not sacrificing field of view for better image quality is worth it for you for me I'm still torn I'm not sure which one of these I'll end up leaving on this whoop but I do know that I like a large field of view This Beta 85 Pro 2 does fly very well. It flies pretty comparable to the ones I've been building myself, uh, the custom 85 millimeter whoops. Uh, when I'm coming out of dives with this guy, I do notice a slight washout, not a full washout, but just kind of a little 
tail wag, if you will, on, on the way down at when um, coming down from a high elevation at, at zero throttle. Pull up one of my custom builds here. This is basically the same thing, same flight controller, but it does have from the Beta 75 Pro to the 25 milliwatt VTX in here, which is very, very light. Um, it doesn't go up to 200 milliwatts like the other, like the Beta 85 Pro 2, but um, at the distances we're flying these guys with these built-in receivers, 25 milliwatts seems to do okay, especially when you're trying to save as much weight as possible. One of the things I really like about this guy, the Beta FPV 85 Pro 2 does fly very well, but for whatever reason, I'm getting slightly better flight performance even so out of this guy here. They do end up weighing pretty much the same amount. This one here only weighs maybe half a gram less, but it also has the LED on the back, which is gonna add some weight. So if I remove the LED and this wire here, we would actually end up even lighter. Um, so for me, this is kind of the best recipe that I've found with the 2S AIO flight controller, a small lightweight VTX. I'm keen to use this Mobula 7 canopy just because it is so low profile, it looks pretty cool. And then you also have the adjustability of the camera here. It's a little bit tricky jamming a camera in there, but I usually just find a small enough one, slide it up in there with some hot glue and I've never actually had it come loose on me. These Happy Model EX1102 motors are coming in at 10,000 kV, whereas the Beta 85 Pro 2 is 11,000, but I don't really notice much of a difference as far as speed between these two. And I would suspect that has something to do with the fact that kV ratings on these motors aren't always 100% accurate. So the fact that this says it's 10,000 kV and this says 11,000 doesn't really mean that they're exactly 1,000 apart. They could very well be very close. And these 10,000 could actually be over the 11,000 that's over here on the Beta 85 Pro 2. One of the downsides of running these motors is they only have three screws here, a, a triple screw mounting pattern. So you do have to go in and drill new holes in the frame. But once you do it to one frame, it's pretty easy to lay this frame over your next frame when you do need to swap and just use a Sharpie to mark out those holes and then use a hand drill to drill it pretty quick. So once you've got it on the first one, from there on out, it's pretty easy. All right, so now we're gonna cut to the field where I have some footage for you guys where I fly the stock camera on this Whoop back to back with the C01 camera from Beta FPV down here. They were within a few minutes of each other so that the lighting conditions and weather conditions, time of day, everything is very similar between these two cameras. Well, the day I flew, there was some blue sky, but for the most part, it was um, an overcast day and it actually did end up raining off and on uh, on me while I was out there flying. So you are gonna kind of get worst case scenario for these cameras, you know, not full sunlight, not a nice bright, fully lit day. So you will see how these cameras do in slightly less than ideal light. For these flights, I was using the DJI goggles back here with the Furious FPV diversity receiver. So you will be seeing DJI DVR with 60 FPS video and that slightly higher bitrate than Fat Shark, so that should help give you a more clear image when trying to compare these two cameras. If ever I had a video Would you dance in it? Would you dance in it? In it? Oh, sunshine, you are my sunshine. Let it in, let it in. Oh, sunshine, you are my sunshine. Let it. They said that you 
wanna see where this goes. I need a light to see home, and I want you to know, sunshine, you are my sunshine.